loyalty described as do you care and I care, and that's why I'm on this show. Come the time, here we go. <laughs> I'm a sucker for O'Teal, man. I saw that same feeling that I have, that what he filled a void that I didn't even know existed. It feels so good to, as Ben said, to try to do something about an issue as opposed to complaining. If you can't help, don't hurt. If we could just all get out there and throw cream puffs at each other, maybe things would, instead of bullets and, and <laughs> yeah, angry be. words, it would be better. When you stop laughing, you stop living. There's a worldwide surge in interest in mushrooms. It was deep, man. It's not that TM makes your mind quiet down there. It already is. We're just stuck up here. We've lost access. I'm jumping Jack Flash. Came out by the stones. So I thought, all right, perfect, man. I'm gonna drive, and I started driving through the neighborhood, and I got, I got a text from Mick Jagger. <laughs> People saying that you know what we do is non-essential. Well, playing those few gigs that yeah. you saw me at felt pretty essential to me. It wasn't like they were clapping from here. Is they were clapping from here. My view of things is that death, death is the last and best reward for a life well lived. Like you gotta, it's the strangest of places if you look at it right, you know? If you're liking what you're hearing, head on over to patreon.com forward slash comes a time pod and get your bus pass for an extra episode every week. What up? Welcome back to another episode of Comes a Time. That's O'Teal. And that's Mike. You're diagonal this time on mine. You're always diagonal on mine, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who who do we have today? What a, a pretty awesome! I'm, I'm <clears throat> so, really excited for this one. Yeah, Chuck and Rob from Mo. Boy, what a double triple story they've been through. Jeez, I know, right? You know, like yeah. uh, coming back from some serious health um, trials and tribulations. I Cancer love them for Rob and the stroke. But Chuck, like, wow, man, that's crazy. With a global pandemic thrown in the middle. In the middle, what a sandwich. What a sandwich, right? A cancer but, pandemic stroke sandwich. <laughs> that's a that's a turducken of uh, experience <laughs> right there, huh? Yeah, they, um, and, and it seems like, thank God, they had each other to bring each other through those, you know, respective things because, yeah. And I've, I've loved them for so long. Like, and it was just another great, like Northeast experience, similar to fish where it's like yeah. Mo was accessible as a kid. You know what I mean? Like you could go see them in small places and they were all their energy when it, like they left it all on stage, you know? And, uh, I really, really enjoyed them at, in so many different phases of their career and my life and stuff. So it was really sad to hear what they were going through. You know, yeah. I, I mean, obviously it's sad, not because of my experience, but it's like, I don't know, it sucks one two punch yeah. like that. But three over three decades together, yeah, you know, and like their perspectives on life now on the other side of this, yeah, you know, and there's still, it's not like it's all over, like they're still having to uh deal with the effects of it and uh. Yeah, that's a forever kind of thing i think the yeah. therapy and the yeah the the all of it like but it gives you this other perspective on life that you really cannot get any other way and uh it's it's great to hear them talk about that because obviously these are big themes on our yeah. podcast like yeah. zooming out and seeing your life in the big picture reprioritize it's like yeah all this stuff that was really a big deal turns out it's not such a big deal right and exactly this is the important stuff you know so yeah and then all the memories <laughs> it's, it's a good podcast i it really think you guys will enjoy this one i did we laughed hard yeah and you know it's uh they've got a tour they're gonna hit be hitting the road soon and we'll post links to all of the where you can find out all that info and uh you know we i wish them the we, we wish them the best and all the love and you know um it's a, it's a brave i'm happy that they're that they're sticking with you know i'm just happy they're gonna yeah. be out there you know so check them out and uh thank you for checking us out folks and if you're having yeah. a good time uh rate review share let people know you're enjoying the podcast uh follow us on our in instagrams and youtubes and all that crap and uh you can follow us on uh patreon uh you could join us for a bonus episode every week patreon.com forward slash comes a time pod um thank you guys so much and uh we will catch you on the flippity flop. 
stay safe, stay warm, stay cool. Keep on keeping on. I'll chat soon. Bye, guys. And we're off. Okay. <laughs> how you guys doing? Well, I'm well. Rob, Great. how are you? <laughs> Great. It's good to how see you. Jan? How are you? We uh, <laughs> obviously Chuck and I don't live in the same spot, so we don't live in the same house anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's the temperature where you guys are at? <laughs> are you going to gloat? Yeah. No, yeah, I'm just gloats. curious. I don't go. He's a weather shamer. Otil's a weather <laughs> shamer. <laughs> right. He sends pictures of his pool while we send pictures of <laughs> snow, snow, ice glazed beards and uh, shovels <laughs> stuck in mounds. It's 40 at least. <laughs> it's not like yeah. oh, 10. <laughs> it was um, last, I guess it was last weekend or not even. Yeah, no, last weekend we had. Just where I live was uh, negative 14 without a wind chill. Yeah. Oh, my uh, gosh. Okay. And where is it exactly you live? I live in uh, – I'm going to see you soon, actually. Um, I live in Portland, Maine. Which I hope not. Is it warmer? I'm sorry. Just kidding. Yeah, it is. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's like 30 or 40 today. Uh, I could deal with that. That's Rob, fine. Did you see yeah. what the top of Mount Washington hit with the wind chill? And they broke the record. 110, something like that. 108. Negative one, yeah, negative 108. And where Dude, is Mount insane. Washington? New Hampshire on the on the very top of it's like the highest peak in the in the northeast. It's the uh, yeah, there's like records there of like the highest the 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 top wind speeds ever recorded are there. And now like the lowest temperature apparently. Lowest temperature. Negative, negative 108. 10, so this is not gloating. This is just what the <laughs> F are you guys well, doing? We're even gloating Jesus. about that. I mean, How bad yeah. does it have to get before you come down here? I mean, my God. 108. I mean, I would tap when it when the polar vortex went through what was it, Chicago and it was like minus 45. I was like, that's that would have been a wrap for me. Right. <laughs> like, well, wow. I thought about you because <laughs> I was in Indiana and Kentucky and stuff doing shows all week. And they were talking about the cold front going through the East. Like I got out of the East just in time to miss it. And they were even saying in Florida, they're like, you better uh, get your coats ready and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, we get our coats ready for 60 degrees. (laughs) I'm not joking. You put socks on under your sandals at 60. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm glad you guys warmed up for sure. Yeah. So are you in between tours right now or or are you home? Yes. What's your next I should say when's your next gig? <laughs> um Portland. So Rob is really um happy it's about that. <laughs> I just have to drive up and uh when when is our first show? I can't remember the uh the, the, the date? date. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, <laughs> Classic <laughs> bass player. Like, uh, uh, that's me too. <laughs> we'll post all that stuff. It's um it's seventeenth seventeenth. Yeah, the seventeenth, every seventeenth. And the eighteenth. So cool. that's good. And then we'll go home and do some more at the palace for the next um weekend. So Albany. love that yeah. room. God love that room. Yeah, we we're just yeah. talking about that. Uh, we were talking about it before you came on, uh, Rob. I, I got to do, I was lucky enough to perform, do stand up comedy in that room. And uh, I love doing shows in rooms that I've seen concerts at, you know? Like it's just a geeky thing for me where it's like, I can, like, yeah, I lost my mind up in that balcony on mushrooms. Or, <laughs> like I, <laughs> and I saw you guys there. I was thinking about before you came on, I was thinking about how. The first time I saw you guys was September 97 at Toad's Place in New Haven. And it was a Sunday night and it was <laughs> such a kick-ass show. You guys were jumping off the speakers. I mean, you just, you it was like Hollywood Bowl. You guys treated it like the garden in 74 or something, but you were just <laughs> rocking. And I got my brown Mo t-shirt that day, or my brown Mo hoodie that day. 
And I remember waking up that morning and going to school being like, you know, when you wake up as a kid in the morning after a kick-ass night and you're like, that rocked. Like I just woke up like still stoned and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> fucking Mo, dude. You I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. You're not wow. the guy who gave me the warm dosed beer that night, are you? Yeah. <laughs> no comment. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. Someone dosed you at, t- at Mo? I mean, at, at Toast? Place. Yeah. Oh. Actually, I think it was, I think it was a couple of years after that. It, might, it couldn't have been 97 because I had, I had a couple little ones at the time and it was like the last show of our tour. And, um, I was driving home the next morning to finally get home and see my kids, you know, like when you have kids oh, and, um, you're really psyched. I, I had, yeah. I hadn't touched psychedelics in a long, long time. And, uh, couple guys, couple of meatheads were just like, Hey, you want a beer? And they handed me a beer. And I'm like, yo, oh. I took a swig and it was like really warm. And I'm like, Oh, thanks. For the, thanks a lot. And then like, you know, down the road that night, I'm just like, I know this feeling. Oh, I know this feeling. oh no. The yeah. guys were, and then they were laughing it, too much. <laughs> yeah. On top. I'm like, Oh no, man. And I'm like, on top of it, my wife calls me and she's like, I threw my back out. You got to get home immediately. Oh. Like I can't even get up off, off the floor. You know, Toad's place. Oh. The main was like I don't know. It's like a good three or four hour drive. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, oh, and then it, I just and then Chuck <laughs> was like kind enough to. He's like, you know what? I'll fucking I'll drive you home. God. And he drove me back. I promise that wasn't me. I wouldn't have done that to you. I don't, that d- yeah. dosing is not a, I don't think it's cool. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 I watched it happen. It was pretty. I don't know. You said you're doing stand-up comedy. It could have no. been part of your act. Hell no, man. Not then. Absolutely not. And I still would never do that. That's just, that's messed up. But It is kind of, it is pretty messed up. I don't, it should be your choice. Yeah. Yes. My body, my choice. That's it. My brain, my choice. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's all about the dosage too. Like, man, I don't know how much you put in there. Like when that feeling comes on, I would be like, okay, fight back the terror. (laughs) It might not not be 1500 hits. It might be just two. You know, but what do you, do you know? Like, no, yeah, dude, I had an experience up at university of Connecticut where a guy had, he was, had a dropper and he was giving me a drop and someone opened the door behind him and hit his arm and he just <laughs> like squeak like, and I just tasted it. And I was just mm. like, you could hear like the slide whistle. I was just like, all right, buckle up. Like, what do you do? Like at that point, what do you do? You know? And uh, yeah, your eyes are closed and you just hear whoops. I just hear the beginning of Riders on the Storm. Like, just that ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so glad that never happened to me. Jeez. Ay, ay, ay. Oh. Those were the days. Yeah, you guys have... Yeah. I, 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 the energy that you brought forth to every... And we were to Eric and I were talking earlier about, like, you know, the, the first Bonnaroo, that set you guys played. Like, there's so many phenomenal Mo moments in my, like thinking just like my experience with live music it's just such a thrill to be able to chat with you guys and that you're both doing okay you know like we we all love you and care about you so well that's you guys are getting better very i mean you know chuck is chuck is a freaking trooper man he's he's definitely made a lot of strides in this past year because when i first when he first you know started to come back he had like five words he couldn't use his whole right hand. It was it was scary, man. Yeah, I had to I have to move my hand like this. <laughs> yeah, wow. it, it was like it was like a a bread. It looked like a bit um, a loaf of bread. It was huge. Wow. What? No, it, it didn't look like a loaf of bread. To me, I, I, it was like it was puffed up. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. what, what was, was the problem? Like, how did you, did you like, you woke up kind of knowing something was happening or what, what was the situation? <laughs> the, the day that it happened, I knew something was um, wrong because I, I saw, I saw my hand and then I, I hit the floor and then I, I don't remember that. And then I was on the Mer- Mercy flight yeah. uh, and I woke up and I was like, Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. <laughs> I was looking out the the window, and the woman was not look, looking at me, and I was like, oh, "This is really bad." 
I don't know what's going on. And then I was, I was, um, I was in a, a coma, I guess. Um, they, they put you in one. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like two or three de- days before I woke up again. And then, uh, yeah, it, I knew it, I know it, it so I knew it was, uh, happening, but I didn't know how much and how, how, um, how, how much I was affected. So, and I couldn't, I couldn't walk. I couldn't use this, this hand and I couldn't really speak. So, but I could, wow. these, um, Rob and my wife, Amy and, uh, Lindsay, our manager, um, they were hanging out and, and I can hear them and I, and I, I got everything like I, I could, I could tell what was going on, but I couldn't, um, speak. So that was really hard to like, join. I couldn't join in. That's all. But how long did it take for speech to come back? Or I should say what, what things came back first? Cause maybe speech wasn't the first thing that came back, you know? Um, I could, um, we were working on my, my, my legs because I was, I was trying to, um, get, um, balance and, yeah. and then I, we would work on a lot of like, um, I, I would toss balls and stuff like, like, like a, a back, back, basket ball. <laughs> and that was kind of fun. Um, but it, it was, it took t- like two or three, three weeks to get into that. And the speech uh, therapy was also every day I was working on everything. Um, yeah. So I got, I got, um, a lot, a cop, a couple <laughs> accomplished, but, um, everything happens and happens, uh, quick, um, slowly with me. Like it, yeah. I'd get a new word or a new thing, you know, every day. So after a year, I can look back and see how much I've um, done. So it's, it's, it's a snail's pace, but I'm working yeah. on it. Well, you've, it's also a whole lot of progress too. I mean, God, going through the pandemic and then that, back to back is like being in a fight with Mike Tyson just for <laughs> yeah. your brain. You know what I mean? Like, Whoa. Well, going through what Rob and then the yeah. pandemic and then you. Right. Yeah. It's I been had a rough... Got over that. Shook that one yeah. off. And then, uh, <laughs> Thank God, man, <laughs> then, then the pandemic hit, we had, we had about a, I don't know, maybe a half a year of touring where we started to get back in the groove. It took like a half a year of just playing to remember how to play. And then, then the pandemic hit. It was just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, and then we started out on the road again. And then, damn it, Chuck. Actually, we did a... Uh, Sorry. Sorry about the, sorry about the <laughs> damn it, Chuck. <laughs> We did a uh, Halloween show where we crammed a bunch of Sabbath tunes. So we did like all Black Sabbath. It was like <laughs> bloody Sa- I forgot what we called this Halloween show, but we dressed like creepy Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just dressed like a Sabbath cover band, essentially. Nice. <laughs> and then the, the stroke happened like just a couple days later. And I, I still think it was from like just jamming your brain full of that many Sabbath tunes. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. Yeah, yeah. They, did a, they did a scan. They did a scan and they're like, you have a bat in your brain. <laughs> 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 There's a headless bat in there. They're just looking at Ozzy's like this and in, in your scan. Oh my God. Wow. So Rob, how, how long did it take you to be able to play it again? Like what was that process? Uh, like, yeah, it was weird. Like I, I had to go, I, I live in Portland, Maine, but like the, the better, uh, because my cancer was, you, you know, like, um, it was in my throat and nasal pharynx. Um, 
And because I'm, you know, like I'm one of the singers in the band, we yeah. took a lot of precautions trying to find the best person to do. Cause I, yeah. I needed, a, it wasn't so much the chemo. It was like intensive radiation. Yeah. So like I had to get like five blasts of radiation every week. Um, and I just get like one chemo per week. Um, it was a good weight loss program for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, unfortunately, I get it all back, but yeah, dying yeah. is not the optimal <laughs> weight loss program. No. You know, I guess did, I don't recommend it. Yeah. yeah. Did your did you were you symptomatic or was it just a lethargy or a like kind no. of? Well, yeah, you know how I found out I had uh, I was growing. I just stopped shaving and I I got one of those like you know, like hoarder type beards, you know, like a uh, hermit. And then I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I'm down South. I think I was in Atlanta or something. We're playing a gig and I'm just like itching my face. Cause I was like sweating my ass off. And I noticed this lump in the side of my neck that I hadn't seen. Cause it was hidden by the beard. Cause wow. I didn't feel anything. And then, um, just went through, you know, when I got home, I'm like, oh, I should probably check this out. And then it was just yeah. a, a matter of, uh, it was the weirdest thing because I had to do all these tests and biopsies and stuff. And, um, the last biopsy they tested, it was like, they do, I think it was like 11 or 12 separate kind of tests on it. And everyone came up negative and she's like, I don't think it's cancer. And it was on the very last one. And it was a two part test. And the first part came back negative. And she's like, you're, you're looking pretty good. And then, and then, um, the very last thing they tested for it came back and it was like a it was um a, i forgot what the you know i can't remember what it's called but it came back positive and it was uh you know it was like an hpv related cancer so it was from vi a virus and hmm. wow it, it, it sounds you know like it's <laughs> one of those ones where they can they can they can you know there's a high, there's a high rate of cure for it. It's just, it's a cure kind of really, you know, nearly kills you. Yeah. It obliterates you for sure. Yeah. Wow, man. I bet. So, you know, we talk a lot about mental health on the podcast just because you know, musicians and comedians yeah. are out right. of their frigging minds. Dented yeah. Cans, baby. yeah. Dented and then, cans. you know, life on the road, like trying. So I imagined, there's a lot of, uh, there's probably, you guys are having both things like a very, uh, evolved or come to a new place of gratitude, just about yeah. life itself. But also there's gotta be some like fighting of depression because the battle part is the battle part. And it's just like 24 seven. Some days you're just like, yeah, you gotta be like, I just, I don't have it today. You know? How has that been for both? I know it's an enormous question, but yeah, it is a big question. Um, well, for me, um, I, I sort of, it was a cathartic experience. I kind of changed my outlook on life a lot going through cancer and just getting, I, I came up with a, you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying I, I changed completely, but it, it helped. It actually helped my depression yeah. quite a bit. Um, and, I just, you know, like every, in, until you sort of like face this sort of thing, a lot of, lot, oh, until I faced it anyway, it was, it was, um, I, I, I don't know. I kind of had a negative attitude about things and like, oh, this isn't working out or, you know, and, and then you sort of just get down that spiraling hole. But like, I pretty much saw like what the positive outcome of cancer can be. Yeah. And if you can do that, then, things aren't so bad, you know, like right. it, it's, it's, um, I'm not saying that, you know, I don't feel anxious or depressed about things and, yeah. uh, but it was, it was actually helpful for me. It was like, uh, I almost needed it in a way. Do you, did you do the thing where, every, you know, you're really lucky? Come, yeah. Come, Cause some like, uh, compared to others you know that i i can see other people going through like yes. what what happened with me i can i'm like i'm i'm totally totally lucky and yes happy to be around you know yeah yeah, yeah. 
I stayed with a bunch of people. Like I, I had to go, I stayed at a thing called the Hope Lodge uh, because the traveling was getting too much and the American yeah. Cancer Society uh, provides it for anyone for free. So <clears throat> it, it was great. And I met a lot of people who weren't going to make it and were yeah. way worse off than I was. Right. And yeah. it just puts a lot of things in perspective and you meet yeah. their families and their kids yep. or their parents. And it's just like, holy shit, you know? Yeah. I'm going to make the best of everything. Yeah. I have a couple of friends who are well, three now, actually, including James Casey. Um, right. One guy's a neighbor across the street neighbor. When I first, when we first moved down here to Boca and He's such a great guy, man. Eric Justin got two twin boys that are like just awesome and watching how he fathers them because it's every day. Like he feels bad. A lot of days he's been battling it for years. Still don't know. Like, you know, he's just in the fight, but watching him be a dad when we all go to the beach and stuff. Yeah, you know, I get frustrated with Nigel, and I'm fighting with you know me and Nigel go at it sometimes, and I, it just like you see, like it, it gives you a perspective that you're not going to get anywhere else, you know, and just yeah. being around him, around Alex Peavy, who we actually had on the podcast, he's got kids, yeah. you know, and talking when you have people that are in your life daily, you know that. Are, any time you could get the text like, hey, man, it's yeah. not working. It just changes things. Even that for me changes. I, and I didn't even have to go through it myself. I just had to be close to it. Yeah. Rob got the uh, the news while we were on the phone, like the whole mm -hmm. band. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. We were doing like, a, yeah, I was like, oh, wow. we're, we do these phone band meetings, you know, every wow. week. Wow. Uh, I was like, oh, I got to take this call. It's my doctor. <laughs> and I told my doctor, like, you know, if I get the news, you know, it's like, is it okay if we do it over the phone or do you want to be in person? I'm like, it doesn't make a difference to me. You can do it yeah, on the phone. Tell me. And she tells, like, I'm really sorry to tell you this. And I was just like, <laughs> kind of. At the time, it was really scary because I didn't know exactly what kind it was. And they're like, it looks like it's stage four which it was, mm. but it's because of what the kind of cancer it was stage four is in a death sentence. Wow. For you. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. Normally it is. Yeah. 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 When you hear but, stage four, you're like, that's <sighs> yeah, it's, it's different for, uh, for this type of cancer, but you know, that wasn't made clear to me. <laughs> <At first. laughs> so, oh, you left that part out. No, yeah. Jeez, no it's good. It's not like. <laughs> yeah. So then I just got back on the phone with these guys, and I just sat there listening to like whatever the meeting was about. It was just like, yeah, man, and you know, like if the catering isn't right, and then you know, <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. oh, I'm yeah. gonna fucking die. I'm gonna die. <sighs> Finally, I just told these guys. I, I couldn't even think. It was weird. Yeah. That's got to be a crazy. It's a. My, I, I, like O'Teal was saying about experiencing it from another, you know, my wife is a nurse practitioner with a cancer surgeon and, um, sometimes she'll come home with some, with stories and, you know, being in entertainment or being your own worst critic and you're spending all day, like career stuff, career stuff, what me, me, me. Yeah. And I go, how was yeah. your day? And she tells me like a half of a story and I'm like, oh my God, oh. like every, everything is amazing here. Like I have nothing. Uh, to, yep. you know, I wasted like, a, so much of my day. What a piece of what? shit I am. I could have been. <laughs> I could have been you know? It's not that it's just, you don't have the, like, it's hard to get that perspective. Yeah. And you know, it's just, we, we don't normally want that perspective <laughs> because yeah. it's like, oh shit. You know, just, yeah, but we need it every now and then that we kind do, of, you know, man. like, and, and to, to the thing that both of you and James Casey and friends of mine and things like so many situations now are no symptoms. Yeah. You randomly scratched your face, man. Like, you know, like that shit, that's, we, we could, we, we somehow are able to treat our cars more preventative maintenance wise oh, yeah. <laughs> than our bodies and our dogs. Maybe we need I like noticed that a lot with dogs. <laughs> yeah. We just need like a USB port or something we can <laughs> plug into our necks just to check. Uh, no, 
You know what it is? Virus. Sorry to get (laughs) political, but we need a decent health care system. Because if you're in Canada, you could go, you know what? Just MRI the whole fucking thing. Let me just see what's going on because it doesn't cost eight million dollars or you're not that one's not in your plan or whatever you you're not just like it's probably like i'm gonna throw it out it's probably like five six hundred bucks in canada i bet (laughs) you know we had a uh a doctor buddy of ours were like said like look this is what you do you get yourself a crisp 100 hundred dollar bill go to the (laughs) mri place like on a sunday when nobody's doing it and just say, can I get an MRI? And they'll just run a freaking give them the hundred really? bucks. I, I've never tried it. I have no idea. But I'm gonna try it because you what if they find something? It'd be like I wanted to, you know, if you gotta wait till yep. you, the body tells you that might be like too late. Yeah. A a buddy of mine, you another know? another another hypochondriac comic <laughs> and I were one in a hotel like Googling, like, is there like a preventative like full body like a like a full body scan thing and i guess like the mayo clinic in princeton offers like a couple thousand dollars and you could basically get like your 3d printout of like your heart your brain like the whole nine yeah. you know and so then just follow- go do that in canada well the following conversation was like <laughs> what do we do with that information you know what i right. mean because like is that good to it's some it's like a double edged butter knife in a way because like there's some things like I've had like you know my doctor's like I feel a nodule on you know we're gonna observe it for six months to a year and I'm like no like I'm going yeah. from here to find out I can't sit with that information yeah. for six months to a year you know see so I, if I find know, out man. there's all these dents and kinks and lumps and after COVID I had to go get my lungs x-rayed and there was like there's scarring in your lungs and I'm like what does oh. that mean you know yeah. so it's just yeah all this like yeah. but then there are those situations it, it's just so terrifying like, I gotta can, know man my kids are too young I got a five-year-old and an eight-year-old do the whole thing I'll go <laughs> investigate 12 places let's do it like I don't you know wait a minute how old are you Oteal I'm 58 I had my first one at 50 <laughs> So, yeah. So when Nigel's 20, when Nigel's 20, I'll be 70. I really wow. am probably going to go to Canada and see if I could just be like, hey, man, I feel something. <laughs> Can you just, just go? <laughs> at the yeah, just okay. go. <laughs> so, oh, I got to, you know, they'll do it. And just because I want to know, man, I got to be it's and yeah. I see all people, a bunch of people that I know or friends of friends um that are having major health issues and almost all of them are younger than me yeah i'm like whoa whoa man you got good genes man i don't know till i get in that machine (laughs) (laughs) you know i don't know were you both were you both of like relatively good health prior to these incidents like like chuck was there any like like clotting things before, prior to like anything like that or that you knew I, of i just got my like full bill of um whatever like Can i was yeah yeah just like a a month before the the stroke and <laughs> wow. and wow. my doctor actually knows about what what happened with me um she studied about this when she was in college and um my my uh i don't know my con- con- condition is um you don't know until it happens mm. you have to do a, a whole st- a scan without knowing anything you know like yeah. so the thing that happened with me was um uh, the carotid um split into two and then clotted and then pushed on the other one and then my my brain starved so there's no there was no way that no one would know you know i i didn't know so you must have had some kind of leakage or something happening because before you were complaining about um you were having um my like uh ocular ocular yeah. migraines and stuff yeah maybe that's uh holy I mean, shit right before we went on stage for that show you were like oh shit it's happening we're standing side stage yeah and then it just went away yeah yeah Chuck, did you did you just see something awesome happen uh a 
eagle, uh, a bald e- eagle went by my window. <laughs> Again? <laughs> yeah, I, it, they're all they're everywhere here. Uh, sorry. Wow. <laughs> no, please don't apologize. That's <laughs> yeah. I was, that wasn't I an was accident, just visiting right? Him and we we're driving, just driving away from his house, and oh, a eagle, right. just like. I, it, like it's you know like a, a crow or something just like comes flying off the road picking up was either a black snake or like a, a uh like a mink or something it was just a long black thing wow we just like, holy crap yeah lunch time my dog yeah. was going bonkers uh recently like three in the morning and we looked outside and there was a massive owl it looked like elf walking around my driveway like it was just like this hump and it's oh you got a great horned owl wobbling like this and it's wow. like like yeah. squealing and one wing's going and it yeah they grabbed huge. like a chipmunk and took off but yeah those will those will throw you for a loop but but you guys are going back out can we uh, we need to go positive for a moment here yeah <laughs> <laughs> just being yeah, sure the listeners just drop one by one oh, yeah no, i think it is positive honestly because you hear when people like if it doesn't kill you, a lot of people say that they're like, like you said, Rob, like I, I'm glad I needed it to happen. Like it, it turned me, it helped me turn this corner. Yeah. You know, but I'm glad I am glad you guys are going to go out. So let's definitely do talk about the playing, getting back at it. It's got to be some serious excitement. I guess it's. It a, I'd love to know about like, you know, how, you know, when you felt like, okay, like I'm going to get back in the batter's box and take a couple cuts or, you know, like yeah. <laughs> using that hand again, you know, like um, Chuck, like that, those moments of sort of like the music at that point is something that has to be like the best medicine in the way, but also y- you serve it. It serves you kind of. What's up everybody. This is Mike. And today's show is sponsored by Sunset Lake CBD a Vermont hemp farm crafting affordable CBD products designed to help with stress and sleep without breaking the bank. Sunset Lake CBD is a majority employee-owned hemp farm located just outside of one of our favorite places, Burlington, Vermont. For years, Sunset Lake was a dairy farm producing milk for Ben & Jerry's ice cream. We had them on the podcast in 2019. They diversified and started growing hemp for CBD. And Sunset Lake CBD crafts products with hemp grown on their family farm and ships them directly to the customer, cutting out all the cost associated with getting on the shelves at stores. They have CBD products for every occasion and offer tinctures, salves, edibles, coffee, smokables, and even for that anxious dog of yours they have pet products oh i need to get some for my dog that's barking all the time but Mm -hmm. i'll tell you this i use these the sour bears so good they are cbd gummies i literally no joke i take these every night they help me sleep and it's almost bedtime (laughs) (laughs) yep and I still, as I said it before, I'll say it again. You go to a long show, you come home, my 42-year-old ankles are not what they used to be. And I rub that salve all over them and uh, put them up, enjoy a, a nice cocktail, and uh, just let it ooze right into those sore bones. And you know what, folks, all you comes a time fans, if you check them out at sunsetlakecbd.com and use promo code TIME, T-I-M-E, you'll get 20% off all products. That's sunsetlakecbd.com. Use promo code TIME, 20% off all products. Sunset Lake CBD, farmer owned, Vermont grown. Thank you. Get you some. My wife um, bought bought a little uh, guitar for me when I was still at the the rehab. And uh, sorry. And I couldn't really, I couldn't hold a pick or anything. And, but I, but I would play like these, um, I could strum these, these um, tunes, and, but I couldn't remember the name of the, of the song. Uh, but I would, I would, I would like, 
make the, the chords and kind of like just strum and just doing that just i don't know it was it, it made, made me happy and it, it, it i don't know it yeah. felt like i could do i can still like work on this like it wasn't just hopeless hopeless so and it felt good the first time i could do that and um uh one of the um therapists who does uh pt and ot um they brought their own guitar because he he could play and he brought his own guitar so i could me mess around with it so it was really fun to just like talk about that trying to do something like a like a little pick out some me melodies and that really helped me feel good about myself. So, and then awesome. from that point, I was just going to keep working on it. And I know yeah, that yeah. Uh, Rob, you had, you had to um, work on your voice a lot. You still do, right? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I was also going to just say, Chuck also had like a video game. It was almost like playing guitar player. Oh, yeah. That was cool. helping with dexterity to uh, get his right hand back, especially, but both nice. hands, I guess. But, um, and he, uh, I mean, just between like our communication with him and visiting, we're just, you know, we're sort of in a holding pattern. We did have uh, a friend of ours, um, this, this guy, Suk Cerullo, uh, who plays in Schleho, and he's a really good guitar player. And we've known him for years. He filled in for Chuck, but we just kept our dates limited, yeah. basically, so we could pay the bills, essentially. You know, so yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and you know, we just waited and waited, and then you know, during one meeting, Chuck was just like, "I think I'm, you know, basically, I think I can do this." You know, let's. Let, we, we we didn't know how we we're gonna do it. We we all we kept saying like it's definitely gonna happen, but when and how and yeah. Um, it just got down to the point where it's like he he basically said, "Fuck it, I can do this." You know, I'm going to do. Well, <laughs> for it. Let's Alan do it. and I went there for like one time and just jammed with him, and I was like, you know, I you know, he may not be able to remember all his tasty licks, but um, he can still play <laughs> solos and stuff, and <laughs> like it'll come. So, and, you know, it was at that point, we knew that it was going to be happening. I mean, yeah, with my voice, um, my voice was fried. I mean, it took me a while to get back and I still don't have the range that I had, but I'm actually, yeah. I've been doing lots of vocal exercises and it's actually my voice is actually sounding better than it has in a long time. And I'm just going to keep doing what I do. So nice. Keep the nice. workouts up. Yeah. <laughs> that might sell. Yeah. You I know, never used to do that sort of thing. I, was just I like, don't either. Yeah. Just like, I'm going to fucking slug some whiskey and like, just let her rip, you know, <laughs> Adam, let's go. <laughs> I know. I see. That's, and that's always the battle. Like mentally for me is like, I know I should do these vocal warmups. Like how much, even if it's just that much better that my singing would be like, yeah. come on. But it's this taking for granted, just like everything being normal. Like yeah. if everything's normal, you're blessed like a million times over. <laughs> you <know>? yeah, no, <laughs> but yeah. you don't realize that until, you know, like for me, just having the flu or whatever, I'll just be like, oh, my God. Remember Let's, to thank God when you just yeah, feel the normal. Flu being somewhere you know. a little bit drier than normal being at yeah. you know a mile high you know yeah oh that gets me now and yeah. yeah it's anything like that it, it's it, you just have to you have to kind of be diligent is what i've learned and what i'm yeah. learning really have but you guys experienced what i have which is also like the just because you guys how long have you played together now like how many years now the band Maybe? 33. Three? Yeah. So yeah. like for me, all these years later, just flying to the West Coast, like I need to, I can't yeah. rehearse that day. I can't gig that day. Right. Because like halfway through rehearsal, it'll be like somebody just pulled a plug. Right. Just the traveling is so much. I have to <laughs> allow myself more time, you know, for that. And then altitudes, 
like i feel like i'm just whining all the time but it's just like man <laughs> i used to just blaze through the altitude i didn't water just give me some more beer and more mm, yeah. bong hits you know and then now <laughs> it's like i've got all this <laughs> migraine <laughs> medicine and anti-nausea <laughs> medicine and all this stuff a gas know? can like the, yeah, the oxygen when, can when you've been what you guys have been through i on top of that on top of 33 years of doing it it's i'm I'm no, imagining I you have to like allow more for yourselves, right? Yeah, definitely can relate to that. Flying, I can't like if I flew on the same day I had to sing, I'd be toast. Yeah, that's uh, so. It, yeah. Like if if it's a short drive to a gig, I'm okay, yeah. or to rehearsal, you know, like if it's only yeah. a couple hours, I'm all right. But yeah, for sure. Once it, once it turns into a thing, then you know, <clears throat> it's it's rough. Yeah, if it's a travel day, I gotta get a car to the airport. I gotta go, even if it's just one stop. Yeah. Don't let there be yeah. no two stops. And I'll be like, look, I'll pay the extra hotel. Get me last flight Not out really the night day. before. Yeah, that could sleep a full night. Then let's do this. You know. <laughs> yeah, I rarely go the same, the same day unless it's like some crazy situation. But we always go the night before. You gotta, you gotta adjust for sure. And the stress, like trying to fly day of people try to get me to do it. I'm like, even if the day goes right, I'm going to be stressed out. That Well, right. And now, especially because nine out of 10 flights are either delayed or yeah. canceled. It's yeah. yeah. You have to go a day early at least get these gigs with like, someone's just like, yeah, we'll pay you this much to come yeah. and sit in and do this thing. And like, we got you a flight on frontier airlines. At, <laughs> you're standing uh, you, know, up. <laughs> you should show up about an hour before the show. You're like, no <laughs> fuck no but it takes you a long time it took me a long time or spirit whatever yeah, yeah to no, be frontier able and spirit are both to like... say no to that stuff yeah you know i let myself do it for way too long and finally i was just like it's not gonna stop unless you say no to you <laughs> <laughs> worry about people thinking you're a dick like you know you just... yeah. <laughs> this is hurting me this is hurting me and it's not help, helping the gig either. Well, that's the, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, that's the good thing about getting back on the road with Mo. Like, I don't have to do that quite as much now. And like, we're going to be out. I, I'm just a little worried about Chuck on the tour bus for like, you know, two and a half weeks or three weeks, whatever, when we go do the bigger tour. Cause he, he hasn't been in that situation in a while. I haven't uh, flown yet either. Oh, oh really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. It'll except be fine, for the, except for the helicopter. Yeah, well, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, <though. laughs> that was a first. <laughs> yeah, if well, I wake up on a helicopter out of the blue, that's like a <laughs> worst case bad. scenario. It's bad. When, when looking at that longer bus tour, though, are you like, is it shorter trips in between stops? Is it maybe multiple nights at a stop? Is it like, or are you just like? We're in, in the south and uh, southwest, so everything is long, yeah. I guess. No, but, uh, no. Wait, no, yeah, but we have, like, we're doing, like, what, like, five Florida shows? I mean, Florida isn't that big. That's that's better. I'll um, see you south uh, on the on the uh, Atlantic side or the Gulf yeah. side. We're, we're doing both. Come on down. <laughs> yeah, I hope I'm home. Like, we, we'll be close, folks. We'll be, oh my God, I don't even want to talk. We'll be at the culture room in Florida. Oh, yeah. That's not far. That's not far. Rob's front f fast favorite. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> such a cool, like, little, I think it's a St. Petersburg, that little yeah. amphitheater there. I love that. That's oh, I really love cool. That. that place is great. It's like an That's amphitheater. It's without a, without a lawn, essentially. What's that called? Janice Landon. Mm, so nice yeah got to do stand up I'm, there i'm too. glad y'all are coming to my side hopefully i'll be <laughs> home so i could see it i think um, we have two i can't remember where else we are i think we're gonna be up like near jacksonville or something i'm not sure yeah cool i want to uh if it, i'd love to ask you guys a uh i'm gonna segue from health to music and back real quick um i broke my arm snowboarding a long time ago snapped my humerus bone and my doctor said 
that was when I was healing, he goes to be break the scar tissue. Do you like golf? And I said, I'll play sure. Whatever. So I was near a nine hole course that you walk and I know you're supposed to do it in silence, but I would listen to wormwood start to finish, uh, walking nine holes. And it became this meditative album. Like wormwood to me is one of the few albums that you can just put on start to finish. And to me, that's like, I mean, I love all, all, like all your stuff, but Wormwood is one of my favorite albums of any band. And I wanted to ask you guys, like when you approach an album or you approach like a body of music, do you have in mind that like this one might be one that is like a throughput, like, or are there some albums where you go like, these are songs that fit, but it may not be like a, does, am I making sense? Do yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Wormwood was up. definitely designed to be like what you're saying. It was, we put a lot of uh, thought into, we recorded a lot of the stuff live and we had like a, a, it was like a jigsaw puzzle where we would play, um, like we wrote these segues spe specifically for that, for that album, for the songs. And then, um, we would we played all the segues in the studio, but we did all the songs live, and then we just took the um, the segues written ahead of time. But then we 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 took them and we just adjusted it to the right tempos for the live tracks that we picked, and wow. um, made them go from one song to the next. That's cool. Yeah, it was never a really thought long, to do that. Weird process. Such an amazing. I, I sort of. I, I sort of spearheaded that effort f with the band and I, I've learned a lot more about music since, but at the time it's like, you guys watched it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. So basically it was like Charlie day writing Nightman with like all these symbols <laughs> and uh, like arrows <laughs> pointing to stuff. And I was just like, this is what it should look like and sound like. And they're like, what the fuck does any of that mean? <laughs> no idea. Me? <laughs> <laughs> You're like a mad <laughs> scientist. Like You're like Don music. On Sesame Street. Nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> it's it worked. It's such a phenomenal album. Like, does that, <laughs> does that, were you happy with the finished product? I mean, it's, we were, um, we were happy to be finished with the product too. <laughs> <laughs> it took a really long time. A there were several studio <laughs> sessions and a lot of, we were on tour with, um, we were on tour, I think with Les Claypool that summer. That might've been the thing where we were with Flying Frog Brigade and the last of it. And we were recording stuff live. So we we're splitting the nights. They, I think, I can't remember how it worked out, but, and then we ended up um, just like getting dropped off by the bus at the studio and finishing right. up. Wow. Right. So it was a long process, but we were, you know, in the end, everyone was really happy with it. But you know, I remember at the time also being like, you know, I don't know if we're done, but I'm done and it's done. <laughs> 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 I'm finished with the yeah. product. <laughs> Chuck, did you have any specific memories from that from that experience? Um, I did. I did a, a a solo, and it was at the end of our time working on it in the studio. And I did this. I was trying to get myself pumped up, and I I ran around like laps around this outside of the studio studio <laughs> and I get my guitar and, and I'd start playing and, uh, and it helped, I guess, to get like that, uh, <laughs> that, you know, just get, get that kind of uh power, like ready, oh, you know, yeah. each a little blue tube. What? He ate a blue chew. Yeah. <laughs> The, the, Sorry, the dick pill the, for those of you that don't yeah, know. All the wrestling podcasts I watched. <laughs> Blue MMA, like a gummy, it's like a gummy Viagra, essentially. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that, but is that a sponsor right. for your show? No, we <laughs> should be. But we're angling. Yeah. Hint, hint, hey, Blue Chew, we got two uh, guys above forty that host the podcast. So, uh, you know, I could never, I could, and still can never get solos in the studio like i can live right. and it's so weird 
like we do a live record the solos i'm like i love it from start to finish in the studio it's in like at least six you're, different pieces you know yeah you're if, tr you're you're thinking too much yeah there. so i tried to like maybe we need to get people in the studio so you like have an audience yeah mm. we talked yeah. about yeah. that maybe and, it's maybe it just has to do with the fact that you know there's always the possibility to fix it that's what it is so it's, yeah that's it a hundred percent you should record an album just without multi-tracking it and just do it live i yeah i've and I've, when i've done that it worked it's crazy yeah. when I've done like a, I did a couple of recordings live to two track one with Dennis Chambers. I was like, oh, great, because um, <laughs> he had a drum solo where he and he thinks it's funny where he deliberately tries to throw you off the beat and it's murder. I yeah. trying to stay I've seen on that. it. Yeah, he did oh. that to me live to two track. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like the and he loves it. <laughs> He's just like, ha. Ah. Yeah. You're wow. just tapping your foot as hard as you can. And but, oh, me and the percussion, it's like, like a Vulcan mind meld, you know. <laughs> right. but, but like I said, I did it though. Like if if the guns in your face cocked and loaded with a <laughs> finger on the trigger, you could do it. Right. It's yeah. the weirdest thing. It's such a mind game that Colonel Bruce he convinced me he's like yeah i just need to get that gun he would say i need to get that gun up your ass and you'll do it you know i'm surprised <laughs> he didn't pull out a real gun <laughs> he didn't have to you know he could yeah. look at you yeah he could pull out like a metaphysical gun that <laughs> was <laughs> just always crack me up and people would ask me if i ever dosed with him i was like are you insane? Yeah. <laughs> we used to call him Brucifer, you know? Can you get that yeah. look in his eyes where it'd be like yeah. lasers come out? I was like, I can't handle oh that God. on hallucinogens. That would, like, what? That would end the show. What did you guys, what are you guys' first memories of the Colonel? Because we go way, like, you guys started what? That guy's a good one. <laughs> Didn't he tell you something about? Like it was your birthday and you basically, yeah. You yeah. remember it? Yeah. I was uh, turning 27 and he said, that's, uh, that's your, th that's the best year of your life. I was like, oh man. But also <laughs> he said um, at, he, he told all of us, he said, when you get to 40, um, women get, uh mustaches mustaches <laughs> and 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 the guys get press breasts <laughs> and all of us are like uh what do we do now <laughs> we walked walked away and we're like oh, what what just happened like, <laughs> yeah and then he like guessed my birthday or something <sighs> It's the last of la the last year of your life, he said. And I was like, Yeah. Oh, wow. Basically, oh, happy birthday. This is it for you. <laughs> Women so get mustaches from, and from men get breasts. <laughs> That's right. Happy birthday. Yeah, right. yeah, just, <laughs> see ya. Just roll the bus slowly into the closest river. <laughs> That's such a, you know, I've heard a lot of Colonel Bruce memories, but never that one. And That's hilarious. That's such a good one. <laughs> I love it. Well, it's I'll so interesting <laughs> how many people he's uh I was do, I was just recently doing uh stand up in Louisville, Kentucky and after the show there was this meet and greet and there was a guy standing there just random by chance one of the guys that worked there and you know the podcast came up and we were talking and uh he goes, "Yeah, I went to high school with uh Colonel Bruce Hampton." And I was like, what the, f like how random of a thing, you know? And I was like, what was he like as a kid? And he said, same as he was now. He goes, <laughs> he had a, a high school band and then they would play like high school events, but he would just play in his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is it like, yeah. Just rolling around on the ground in his underwear playing. And it's like, <laughs> this guy's just telling me this story. It was great. This is so funny. Oh. <laughs> well, fully formed. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. He said it it happened to him all at once at nine years old. Yeah. He just like was in a restaurant, a really, really old uh, historic restaurant. I wish I could remember the name of it. 
in Atlanta, Georgia. And, and, you know, the women have bouffant hairdos and just like the whole picture. And he jumped PD, up on PD the table. PD packs? Huh? <laughs> PD packs porch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, no, oh, it's, uh, it's close oh man it went in and out of my head but um he jumped up on the table and he was like you're all crazy this isn't real but he's just like raving you know stark raving full-on hit him all at once in a restaurant he was and nine did you say he was nine <laughs> nine years old just blam, <laughs> like he got hit by lightning and it Jeez. was uh, he just, like saw the light or oh whatever God. you know saw that i think something some <laughs> the universe turned on the dmt spigot in his head, just like, a, oh, like a fire hydrant just <laughs> everyone in the restaurant's like i'll have what he's having <laughs> <laughs> this little nine-year-old right. genius <laughs> yeah so by the time he got to high school it was long it was done to done done you know, yeah. there's wow. guys like him. And I would have loved to have known or been a fly on the wall during a conversation of like him and Captain Beefheart. You know, I feel like Beefheart was like a West Coast. Yeah. Bruce you know, somehow. what's interesting is um, he I think he met Zappa that way. Zappa uh, Zappa came to Atlanta and they went to see him in some small club for probably like three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was because he knew uh, Christoph Pendereski that like Zappa was like freaked out because, you know, Colonel was probably a, a teenager at that time and uh, or very close to it. But uh, he told me he had some really deep uh, talks with Weir, which I was the pig pen was usually who he hung out with. Yeah. But he said he said, man, you'd be surprised like that. that cat, I've had some deep conversations with that cow. I was like, all right. This before yeah. I was into all of it, you know. Yeah, and uh, I believe it. I man, Whatever. me and me and we're. He's the one that turned me onto that book, Autobiography of a Yogi. Have you ever? Yeah, I downloaded the audio book after you had said that. Man, yeah. seriously, download the however you audio visual. That book is deep, man. That was the first book he turned me onto when I joined the band, and I was like, all right. <laughs> These guys are not playing around, you know. <laughs> what's what's your uh, takeaway from that? Like from from that book, or yeah, yeah. yeah just give us a sound bite. Yeah, he's a <laughs> he's an Indian mystic that, like Ram Das, you know how. Um, yeah, Neem Crowley Baba. He he did some stuff that Ram Das was like, hey, and he was not on acid. Like it was impossible things like what colonel bruce did and what sun Ra did and you know what i think all the like famous people and religions maybe it's embellished what the, but there's a root of something in there that really where the impossible happened and that's why people wrote it down and or kept telling it you know and this an autobiography of a yogi man this dude pulled some shit and they're like, whoa, that happened. Sorry. Hate to, <laughs> you know, sorry, hardcore scientific materialists. You're just going to have to suck on that one, you know? Like, <laughs> and he has this beautiful, beautiful, like his whole take on Christianity, which I was deep into theology at that point. And um, his interpretation of it, I was like, dude, that's exquisite. That's like... Mwah. you know wow. and but everything like that's it's way beyond it just it's I, and i don't know if that's a good enough sound bite for it but the, the cat's really a beautiful beautiful soul incredibly wise i think you got one being. you said uh suck on that <laughs> <laughs> suck on that O'Teal i was just thinking it's way too complex to actually have any type of sound bite to no it. well it is i mean i can't even begin you know but yeah. it's like putting colonel bruce into a soundbite like you see the impossible enough times yeah yeah and it's too much to be coincidence yeah it's just too much you yeah. know very uh intriguing image of him on the cover too and it's like you kind of get a look at this person and it's like you know some people you just look at and you're like that's a very deep interesting human being you know like on the cover autobiography yeah. of a yogi that's exactly what it is that's yeah. what got me right away with it for sure it's it's something it, it helped me like 
give uh there's this little foundational thing with me and bob because of that you know that cool. i could take because i can you know the colonel bruce thing <laughs> not everybody can get with that you know with the <laughs> just pure magic yeah. pure yeah. psychics aliens the whole nine wizards fairies elves <laughs> i'm down with all of it right so a lot of people can't go there you know and that to know that with bob i'm like all right so we're you know i shouldn't have been surprised but you just don't know you know yeah you don't know he's down to talk about anything essentially huh i feel like any conversation i've had with bob where it's just like he has like either any he has some sort of knowledge about anything you can bring up to him it's either a wealth of knowledge or enough to like get by on something but it's just like any subject yeah it's yeah. really weird and they're all like that yeah oh, <laughs> we, oh were, yeah. we were playing in the sand recently and i'm just sitting there with mickey and the kids and you know and mickey starts tell, talking about this time he's hanging out with fidel castro <laughs> and this whole long thing and, and and they're like you know at one point fidel goes you and me we're a lot alike and i was like yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> you're like, or, or he said we think alike like <laughs> and his wife's over there she's like oh <laughs> Does mickey put the horns on fidel dude it was such an out story and i was like who and my wife is sitting there just like this is absolutely crazy. Like truth is stranger than fiction thing, yeah. you know? Yeah, man. I wish I could even remember all the story, but we were just like, we got up after like, well, so that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. <clears throat> oh, and he had, he had, Fidel gave him a thing of cigars because he really liked him and connected with him. So I could leave you with this nugget. So he goes, yeah, after I got back home, Every year on Fidel's birthday, or maybe it was Cronkite's birthday, he said, I'd smoke one of those cigars with Walter Cronkite. <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> all this and no acid. Like, you know, <laughs> I got this box of cigars and I only smoked it with Walter, Walter Cronkite, Cronkite on his birthday or Fidel's birthday or something. You know, I think it was Cronkite's birthday. I was just like, all right. Jesus. <laughs> My wife was freaking That's out. That's insane. It is, man. It's just like this. This planet is a magical place if you realize <laughs> yeah. it and you could like be aware. So I'm glad I, I made it this long to like see stuff and actually have enough awareness to go. Wow, this is truly magical, you know, and I'm glad you guys did, too. Great. You know? <laughs> yeah, I we're hope super I see you all soon, yeah, man. I'm excited to catch you guys on this tour for sure really excited about it and we'll post all the dates and links for everybody who listens thank you thank you so much man yeah. and uh yeah i mean sorry i was late <laughs> <laughs> me too you yeah. know what's funny is we we said the same thing we're such bass players <laughs> mike texted me and he was like we're on at like 10 minutes before because i usually hop on like 15 minutes before it's like we're on 11 right and i'm like oh shit <laughs> And then when, he, when he called you, he was like, you know, we're doing a podcast. He went, oh, shit. I was like, bass players. <laughs> I was actually to in the bathroom. I was taking a dump when Chuck texted me. <laughs> See, that's all I wanted to know. <laughs> that makes me I happy. Like, Are you fucking... I just get the text from Chuck. It said podcast with question marks. And I thought he was talking about our podcast. And I'm like, I didn't think we were doing our podcast. I like, I'm thinking like the next time we do our podcast, we're promising to do it at night when we're all hammered. <laughs> and I was like, thinking about it, and I'm like, Chuck, use your words. Yeah. And then he like, calls me and tells me this. I'm like, oh shit, really? <laughs> Instead, he bu bust busted my balls. <laughs> yeah. That's the story of my life. That's awesome. <laughs> ignore, um, ignore my faults and point out someone else's. <laughs> well, I really well, hope uh, I get to see you when you come down this way because knowing what you've been through. I'll know what's going into that, those notes more, you know, like, <laughs> hell yeah, big picture. So it's going to be deep. I hope the universe lets me be there. Me too. <laughs> really appreciate Thanks, you guys, guys spending time with us, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Right on.